Hello everyone. Over the last two days I've had no fewer than seven queries about a variety of different pulse electromagnetic field generators out on the market. And it dawned on me that we don't really discuss the other options out there and why we choose to use things like the Qi Pulse or the Qi rather than any of the other brands on the market. I hope to address that in this video without getting too bogged down. First off, in general, the benefits of PEMFs are reducing muscle tension, improving circulation, stimulating the immune system, improving cell function, helping the body to detoxify, reducing stress, balancing the endocrine system, reducing inflammation, regenerating tissues, improving the uptake of nutrients, and even improving sleep. Now, there are two schools of thoughts for PEMFs. On the one hand, we have the high-intensity generators that blast the body with the frequencies they are tuned to. And then the other hand is the low intensity generators that operate below one gauss. These are often referred to as earth frequency PEMFs due to their similarity to the gauss levels emitted from the earth's core. But there's also mid-range PEMFs, we just don't really seem to see too many of those, so I guess people don't really think they're that useful. So all types of PEMFs pass completely through the body, regardless of intensity, so that doesn't matter. The most common school of thought is that the higher the intensity, the more intense the result. As such, a lot of people go for these high-intensity generators. The problem is that these high-intensity PEMFs are the equivalent of, like, shouting at a child to clean up his toys. The child, is, in this analogy, is your body, and the toy is the problems inside it. So your body responds quickly, but it's shocked, it's frightened. So it's placed under extra stress while it does what it means to do. Low-intensity PEMFs are the equivalent of talking to that same child, but having sort of a calm and collected conversation. Sure, things may take a bit longer, but the child won't get upset, there's no stress placed upon it, and the toys, well, they still get cleaned up. It's for this reason that low-intensity PEMFs are some of the most popular. They work in tandem with the body to ask it to fix the issues, rather than stirring up a hornet's nest of stress in the process. The problem, experts say, is that these low-intensity PEMFs require extremely specific frequencies to get effect across the body. This is true as well. Many of these low-intensity generators don't allow you to select the frequency and instead operate along a really wide range. This is the beauty here, because with our microcurrent technology as a generator, we can be specific to what we want to treat. Microcurrent technology works at a wide range of very specific frequencies tailored to get results in regard to certain conditions. So research shows that treatment at 7 Hz regenerates bone, 2 Hz regenerates nerves, and 77 Hz, well that will restore normal electrical charge to scar tissue removing its hindrance within the body's communication network and improving the body's natural ability to heal. These effects are not consistent enough to get things done in a strong amount of time if they move along a range. They may work to the general benefit of PEMFs, but they won't hit the specific problems that they claim to deal with. So take, for example, a PEMF device that runs along a range of 1 hertz to 150 hertz, and how effective that would be in treating bone damage. Well, 7 Hz was the frequency that Siskin and Walk approved back in 1995 to show regenerative properties on damaged bones. So we know that treatment at that specific frequency is required to hit the brain's button that says, hey, regenerate these bones now. So imagine a 30-minute cycle. How often do we think this device actually stays on the necessary 7 Hz? If we assume it increases by 1 Hz every second, and we must assume this in most cases since they don't really disclose their frequency dispersion, that means it takes 150 seconds to move through the cycle and start over. We know that the program in its entirety runs for 30 minutes, and that there are 60 seconds in a minute. So 30 times 60, that's 1800 seconds. So 1800 divided by that 150 gives us 12. So there are 12 full cycles of the mode over 30 minutes. So 12 times over the course of the 30 minute program, we hit 7 hertz. Now if we remember that each hertz is a single second, that leaves us with 12 seconds of actual, accurate treatment. That's 0.67% of the entire treatment period that's actually working on the problem at hand. Isn't that ridiculous? Now, of course, we can expand a small range for these frequencies to have some lesser effect, but even doing so would barely increase the actual runtime on the treatment of that bone. On the other hand, to complete the same treatment of bone, we'd recommend 15 to 20 minutes of constant blasting the area at 7 Hz. There's a big time difference there. In fact, to make that up, we'd be looking at days of constant treatment, non-stop with the previously mentioned cycle. Even the treatment modes in a microcurrent device that move along a range, like Blue Stimulate, don't take more than a few minutes to do so, so you're still getting vastly increased exposure to the necessary frequencies. Waveforms are another bone of contention with PEMFs. 
Some say square waves are the only way to go with PEMF generators, because a NASA study used only square waves in their products. Well, that's true. But these square waves were NASA square waves, so we don't know anything about them. They're, they're nothing like traditional square waves that we find in TENS devices, and in a lot of these PEMF products. As many of you are aware, microcurrent uses sinusoidal waves, waves that operate on the same level as the human body. And these waves work because the body thinks it's telling itself what to do. That's the real beauty of them. Our bodies will reject things that are foreign to them, and this is a problem with square waves. They're not natural, so the body doesn't take them for very long. Qi waves and via Qi products output at less than one gauss. They're considered earth frequency PEMFs. They operate on sinusoidal waves and they are fully controlled at a constant output based on the Avasia device that's plugged into them. In this case for mine, I've got an Avasia Life plugged in. Which means that a 30 minute treatment in one frequency is a 30 minute treatment targeting that specific problem. To top it all off, it's cheaper to buy a Qi wave than most of the PEMF technology out there. In addition, we've seen the benefits of microcurrent directly transferred into treatments with the VHG and Qi wave products. We can treat a variety of conditions more casually and across a larger surface area by using a PEMF attachment than we can by directly applying the technology to the skin. There's a big advantage in that. In fact, a 100-person study was done in Malaysia involving diabetic foot ulcers, and the primary tools used were the VHG, which, through PEMFs, was able to treat and heal these ulcers even though they were encased in bandages and casts. The fact that the body and the mind actually heals itself, and how the correct influences can release, augment, and accelerate these processes may seem ridiculous to many people, but given the right circumstances and the right push, the body will go back to its normal state. This appears to be the general goal of all PEMFs. Here, the adage of do the least that does the most applies to PEMF applications. Intervention with powerful, overwhelming levels of energy, such as those found in high gauss PEMF devices, may open the body's floodgates, but the heart and brain still remembers why the disease process was originally initiated. So don't be surprised if this sort of therapy becomes a treatment instead of a resolution. Well, that about wraps up this explanation. Grab your PEMF generator today and increase the flexibility and effectiveness of your microcurrent treatments. Have a good day.